Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Karibuni, thank you for joining us for our Africa Regional Webinar. Today we have an amazing team all the way from Mwanza, Tanzania. But without further ado, let's first start with a word of prayer. I'd like to invite our sister Modupe. Thank you so much, Maureen, and good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I will just have a word of prayer. Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name for another opportunity to come and worship together. We pray today that as we glean from you, help us be encouraged try till you come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mudupe. And uh, now I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our Vice President Strategic Initiatives in Africa, Dan Kramer to invite our team who will be uh, four speakers coming all the way from Mwanza. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Maureen, and thank you, Wadupe, for praying. It's good to be here. I obviously am not the one who lives in Mwanza, Tanzania, but I get to come here very often. Uh, this is a privilege for me. Um, I'm bringing a team of volunteers, so there's two things I really want to uh, show today. One is there's a literacy program emerging in Africa from our daily bread. Um, and two is there's a sense of volunteerism that's being built up in multiple different levels. And I would like to express that with the team. Um, to begin, uh, just to, um, from myself, my role is strategic initiatives in Africa. I, I come in as a guest and I try to bring interesting things that will engage the church to go further in engaging scripture. And in doing that, one of the programs that we saw was a need was literacy. And right from the Great Commission in Matthew 28, we're told to go preach, teach, and disciple nations. And as we do that, we know that doing that takes a, a requirement of independence at some point, at least in discipleship, because those disciples are meant to go go reach further disciples. And if you can't engage scripture with literacy, it's really hard to disciple. Even if you're sitting in a congregation and you're trying to listen to the pastor, to be able to read your scripture for yourself and internalize it is a movement involving the Holy Spirit. And so we asked the question, what if we could create a program in literacy that was faster than normal, okay, that was less expensive than what's normally out there, it does not cost anything or it costs uh, the price materials if necessary and what if it could point towards god in a godly reflection of what what people are reading so we set out to do that and we've been experimenting with it for some time and this is not the first time that we have taken a team to the field this is the first time we have really fully gone after a region of the world and that's in tanzania uh, we have a great partnership in the africa inland church of tanzania and i see bishop uh Peter Kasina is on the, on the webinar, and so I just want to thank him for all his efforts from the AICT in opening up the doors of the church network. And he's really given us schools and churches to train people in, and we've trained 127 leaders in this country in the past two months. And this team that you're about to see has come from the United States as a group of volunteers to say, I want to give up my time my work, my family for, for a couple of weeks and see how many places can we go. They've gone to 11 sites around Tanzania in two weeks and they've trained over 200 people in how to implement this literacy program. Instead of me talking about it, 
what I've asked them to do is for them to share three things. Each person is going to say who they are. Um, I'll lightly introduce them and transition them. And then they're going to give their impression of being in Africa. This is their first time in Africa and Tanzania. So I wanted to capture their impressions and what God has laid on their heart. I wanted them to teach what they have been teaching these last two weeks. Each of them has had a responsibility to the program. And then I wanted them to relate that biblically to something that God put on their heart as well. And so I'm going to have each team member talk about that. After these four team members uh, do this, this part, you should have a glimpse into what this literacy program does. It's designed to be handed over quickly in it for days to the local church or the and then they can run with it and they can implement it in their system. We know um, across the continent, there's a huge, huge challenge in literacy across the world, actually. And so we want to reduce those percentages as people are discipled. So each person is going to share. After that, we are actually on site in a school and we're going to have some people from the school what's happened here. We're going to do this very quickly. So we're going to go from one person to the next and have them each share. The first one is special for me. They're all special, but each one in a different way. Um, and this one is um, Sadea. She is in my Sunday school class in my home church. And last year I was able to take some uh, from my Sunday school class, she was not able to go. She wasn't in there yet. And so she heard about it. And so she joined in this year. And so she uh, in the last few weeks of getting ready, said, I want to go too. And she came and she's been teaching assessment these last two weeks and how to build up the program. So let me introduce today. And she's going to begin by talking about what assessment is and her impressions of what she's learned while she's here. Hello. <laughs> um, as Mr. Dan said, I'm today and I was teaching assessment. Um, is uh, the first part of this program. So when a student walks in, that you teach. And so essentially what it is teaching um, is what part of the literacy kit that we're to give a student when they walk in. So it's broken up into four different levels, um, four being hot, the highest, one being lowest, and each part or each level has a part of the literacy kit that we're giving students. So if a student has um, no background reading at all. We have our sun booklet that we hand them. If they're level four and they're really great at reading, they understand everything, then give them our devotion book. Um, so there are a lot of examples of assessment in the Bible. Um, Jesus is really good at this, um, but one of my favorites is in 1 Corinthians where um, Paul is writing his letter and he says that um, the Christians were um, kind of on the level of drinking milk and they were not moving up to solid foods yet. So they're still on this, this basic level of being a baby and still drinking their milk. And what he wanted for them is for them to be improving and moving up to the solid foods. Um, so this is this is my first time in Africa, and first time in Tanzania. Um, it's gorgeous, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I don't think I can even verbalize it. Um, and as, as we were driving around, something that just kept playing in my head was like, oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Um, and the, the Sunday before we left, Mr. Dan was talking about um, a staircase life versus a wave life. Um, so the staircase is this constant step up, this constant improvement versus a, um, the wave is peaks and troughs. So you have these really high highs, these really low lows. And so something God kind of put on my heart as I was thinking, oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Because he was like, yes, it does. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm really excited for the future and for what um, God has in store. So, yes. okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Sadea, just so you know and have context of who is presenting, she is 23 years old, I believe. And she has been in my Sunday school class for a year. Um, wait, I don't get many 23-year-olds who are willing to say, I will go. And this is a command to us as Christians, I will go. And to see somebody at this age go forward and do something that is actually complex. She, com she, she explained it very simple. She came in and she said, I'm going to assess learners. So I want you to imagine a classroom of people who are coming in and saying, I, I can read. I'm struggling in reading. I can't read at all. And our job is to quickly take them and give them material and find out where they are. We can do this in minutes. 
um, and we can find out how to level students in the appropriate material. The material we provide them, we'll talk about a little bit later, but is it all pointing towards scripture? Our goal is to teach people to read for sure, but what do we want them to read? We want to engage them in scripture, and that's our ultimate goal. Sadea so is the first piece. So if you're if you're wanting to know how to put a literacy program together, the first one, critically important, find where the levels of the students are. Whether adults, whether children, what can they read? This is not a test. This is not a formal written test at all. Reading needs to be comfortable. So we lightly give them a book, see if they can read it. If not, we move it to a simpler book. If not, we move it even simpler. If they can, we move it a little bit harder. And then we group them into one of four levels. And then we'll talk about the kid a little bit later. But what if students can't read at all? What, what happens next? Um, it, and we find many of students that are like that. And so we're going to bring Winnie here and she is going to share what she has done in taking the students who can read nothing. And she's going to demonstrate it for you and talk a little bit about that. So let me introduce her. Um, good afternoon, my name is Winnie Forbes. Um, this is my first mission trip. Um, it's been exciting. It's been a pleasure to be here. This is um, the first part, first time I've ever taken part in anything like this, but it was really, really a pleasure. My part was the sun. These are what the cards look like. Sun, which means um, what is symbolic universal notation. notation. So we have these cards for those people who literally cannot read. So all these cards have these little pictures on them. So we show them each picture for them to kind of figure out what it is. If they can't figure it out, or if they do, we turn it around. So this symbol here symbolizes that's a person. So each one has the symbol in the front and then the person, what it means on the back. So that's one. That's a face. So we show them this picture in the front for them to figure it out. And then we turn it around and we show them what the meaning of it is. So all of this, when we're finished showing them all the cards, it finally end up making a sentence. So when we're finished showing them the card, they're able to read all these that were written on the card, the pictures, and all of these pictures on the card make up a sentence. So right here it says, Jesus, I'm sorry, people desire to touch the side of Jesus' clothes. So, and this is all on these cards that we show them. So when we're finished with them, they're actually really able to read and to let us know what it says. So it says, people desire to touch the side of Jesus' cloak. And then we turn the card over, and now it's in English. Same thing. People desire to touch the side of Jesus' clothing. When they're finished with that, we give them a verse from Matthew 6, 55 to 56. And most of them, quite a few of them, are able to read this Bible verse because it all matches up with what's on these cards. So that was my part of the program. What I learned from this, my scripture, is what I got out of it a couple of days before. What is this? Matthew 19, verse 14. Jesus said to suffer the other children to come unto him and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 18, verse 1, Jesus asks, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed that child among them. Then I wrote, Jesus loved his children. He said, the last, he said, the least you do unto one of my children, you do also unto me. Each of us have the responsibility to do something for one of God's children. If I do a fraction, someone else do a fraction, and someone else does a fraction, eventually with all of us together, we'll be able to meet the need of a child. This is what this program is all about. There is four teaching segments of this program, and when all the parts are put together, the end result is an amazing, beautiful thing that fills the teacher's hearts with unspeakable joy and the child face with the sweetest smile you'll ever experience. Can you imagine meeting a child at the beginning of a program that could not read and on the read visit is able to read a book and look at his, his and her face and it says, I have accomplished something, I did it. 
Now they're able to pick up a book and read anytime. They're able to pick up a Bible and learn more about Jesus, the one who loved them and created them. What this program will do is to bless a child with life, in life with the best tool, and the best tool for any child is to learn how to read. There will be so many more doors that will open for this child with the basic foundation of learning how to read. Thank you, and God bless. I have been open to Tanzania to help with this program. <laughs> okay, there's many things in there that I need to, to go her last statement being first. <laughs> uh, she has to stay in a place that she's only been to once for a few days. And uh, God has moved in her heart tremendously. And, and to see that is exactly what I wanted you to see in volunteerism. Underlying this program is volunteerism in Africa and volunteerism in other countries as well. When God talks about going in Acts 1-8, he doesn't say go here and then go there. He says go. And he says go, 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 go. Not go and then go. Okay? He values all of those locations equally. And so, so to see the heart of somebody who understands, I need to serve everywhere and be ready for anything God calls me to, is that sense of volunteerism. And I'm just going to tell you from an American side is it's on the decline and on the side of Africa, it's on the rise. And so to see someone from my country come here and be touched by that and say, I want to be that volunteer here is a big deal. But let me go back because she sounds a little crazy with symbols. Um, and it seems like, what are you doing? You're teaching some symbols. What, what we found, and we found this from working with deaf people. Okay, people who could not hear, but they never learned a sign language. They were are able to learn a language much faster than all of us who can hear. And the reason is, is because their senses have reduced the, the structure of the language into smaller bits and pieces. So we thought, we tested this program with deaf people around the world. Why don't we take the symbols and use those symbols to, to link them to English vocabulary or any other language vocabulary. So we did an experiment about two years ago. We actually did it in Nigeria, Ethiopia, Uganda, and the United States. And for learning Spanish language, none of those countries have Spanish. And we taught them these symbols and on the back of the card was the words in Spanish. And we gave them a passage, it was 1 Peter chapter one, and suddenly they could read 1 Peter chapter one after one week. And then we tested them for retention. This is graduate students. We tested them for retention over six weeks of time, and they kept the, the memory of the vocabulary over six weeks of time. If they can keep that vocabulary in their hearts, in their minds, they are ready to plant the words much faster than any other literacy program out there. Usually it takes years for people to learn a base of vocabulary the way that we're teaching it. This puts it in the brain very, very quickly. And so then we're able to move it on right into what's called a literacy kit. I would like you to meet Arlene. Arlene is a person in my church as well. And she serves in multiple different ways. But um, one of those is to run an online Bible study when COVID happened, um, which is part of the foundation of this group that came. And she's going to talk about the literacy kit. This is the core of material we take students through so they can learn how to read quickly. And she'll explain that to you. Hi, my name is Arlene. Um, I've done the assessment program here, also done the SUN, and I've done the literacy kit, which um, that's where I spend most of my time. So basically what we do, we have starts with our vocabulary words, which we have for this. It's um, A to B. It's, the words are pretty simple in the beginning, and they just get more difficult in the end as we get to this area. So these are the first set we start with the vocabulary. Then we move on to fragments. There are also A, B, C, and D. And of course, again, oh, I should open. So the fragments are here, which these, the beginning books start with two words and the second book also have two words. And as we go more and more to C and D, the words get more um, fours and threes and fives. So for instance, this here has many colors. So for the children who cannot read, if they would look at this word, this word says many here. So in this picture, it illustrates many different colors. 
So we would ask how many colors are here and they would express to us that there are different colors and that's how we would come up with many colors. And of course the word color comes from the picture, the colorful picture here. And like I said, it's pictures. They seem to be able to correspond with pictures with their word. And they're doing very well here with that. After that, we go on to easy sentences. We have easy sentence A, and we go to our part sentence, which is D. And we also have medium sentence one and medium sentence two here. So with this, I always start out with an easy sentence. I apologize, this one is not in color. I don't know if you could see, but I'll point right here. So right here in this picture here, there's a little bird. Then I would ask the student to just look at here and then I'll point out these few things. This is a bird. What is the bird doing? They would say flying. And then I would say to them, go ahead and read the sentence and they're able to read it. The bird is flying and so on and so on for the remaining of the pictures. They do very well here. Now, if the students are able to complete their vocabulary, their fragments, and their sentences from easy to hard, then we move on to open Bible stories. And then when we open here, if the children are able to read these fluently, then we continue to move them on to books. I did not have any books with me me here at the moment, but we do have books from level one to five, easy to the hardest. And then we would allow them to go and choose a book in the level that they feel they're capable of reading from. Now, if we see they pick a book because we assess them and they pick a book that we think it's too easy, we would direct them to the one that would be best for them to read. And that's how we train the teachers to be able to assess and know what level they're reading from so they could direct them to the book and not just look at the pretty picture and say, this is beautiful, I want to read that book. Once they finish this, we also have devotion. These are from um, one to nine. Right. Because when you speak of devotion, devotion, you have um, Bible scriptures in here. And I've always think this is gonna be um, rewarding for the, the student, also for the teachers, because when you have a personal relationship with the Lord, you spend time with him in the morning, you always wanna read your Bible and you always wanna to talk to him. However, this, the devotion, once you read those devotion, it talks about, I will always be with we go to the Lord Jesus and this would just help us to go deeper and deeper with him in our relationship. My Bible verse that stood out to me, then mentioned it also is to go teach and, and command, he command us for what we should do. Um, folks always said to me, why do you wanna go to Africa? Why, why you wanna go that far? And I always turn to that scripture of the Great Commission that he will be with me always to the end of the earth. And one last thing to sum it up. Um, I've always liked the scripture also in Philippians 4 verse 13. Um, that I could do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And the all included one morning, Brother Dan had a devotion and I was able to learn about the other programs that um, he's involved with. I knew about the Bible translation, I'm a part of that. Um, now I'm involved with the lit lit literacy kit. I know how to do that. Then he spoke about um, police officers of, um, teaching them how to, um, let me get that for you. I jot it down here. To reduce excessive force. It's, he spoke about um, being a hospital, supporting someone that is in the hospital that feels they don't have no hope, just to give them that support and follow up with them when they come out of the hospital. Um, he also spoke about financial resources. You could be a team for that. I could already recruit folks to come on a mission trip. And I noticed this is a huge job and it cannot be done by one person. So I go back and I start speaking to the Lord and I ask, what is it you want me to do, Lord, once I finish the devotion? When I went to bed Monday night, this past Monday night, my friend here with some pastor were preaching and he was talking about small, small 
things and great things and large for us. And he said, once you start at the small stuff, and once you get to the large stuff, it will seem small to you. So with that being said, I am praying. I'm asking God to guide me because I've seen with all found out that Dan is partaking in that it's going to take a lot of folks to come to this. And these children here, they're so humble. They're so loving. I love children. I have four of my own and eight grandchildren, and I just want to do the best for these folks here. I cannot say I'm moving to Africa right now because I'm here, but I will do whatever I can on that street. Oh, thank you, Arlene. Um, so that's a great place to go back to is, is the devotions um, are one of the challenging things for students. But I want to put a timeline to the kit and what she said, it, just for review. Um, Sadea came and said, first thing we do is we assess students. Okay, we find out what level they're able to read. Second is if they cannot read at all, we do something called sun and we do symbolized teaching. This accelerates reading. It takes about a year and a half off of a reading process. It takes five years to become fluent in a language when you start from zero. Okay, and so we're trying to do this all in one year. If we can teach them vocabulary in a number of weeks, then we go to the literacy kit and Arlene expressed several different books, 12 books in all, vocabulary to sentence, to fragments, to sentences. That is anywhere from six weeks to 12 weeks of instruction. By week seven or 14, they are reading open Bible stories. We have taken people who cannot read and by week seven, potentially, they are reading about God. That is way faster than anything that's out there. And then by week 16, they're reading devotionals that are our daily bread devotionals. They're a little bit modified for simplicity up to normal. And then we are engaging them in scripture right after that as well. And that becomes our literacy process and literacy kit. But how do we know that they are actually learning? This is the fourth step. So the first is assessment. The second is finding those who can read nothing and catching them up. The third is taking them to the literacy kit. But the fourth is monitoring and tracking them. And we have one more person who is uh, the daughter of the person who just spoke, um, Arlene. Um, she brought her daughter because she always wanted to go on a mission trip with her daughter. And so uh, she is here. We have a mother-daughter duo. And this is Shanika. She is also a member of my church. Um, and she serves with children. So this uh, really hits her heart in reaching out to the children as well. So let me let her talk about um, tracking and following up on students. Shanika. Hello, everyone. My name is Shanika, um, and I will be talking about um, the tracking sheet. Um, that's a system that we use. It's the fourth part, um, and it teaches and reviews the higher level thinking skills of the students that the teachers come in uh, contact with. Um, there's six different areas where you will ask multiple questions to try to figure out do they really understand what they're reading and are? And so those levels are, the first one is knowledge. The second is content. The third is comprehension. The fourth is analysis. The, the, the fifth is synthesis. And the last part is evaluation. Um, the first three, you really need to hone in on knowledge, content, and comprehension before you can progress to the others, because if you don't master the first three, it's really hard to get into analysis and synthesis and evaluation. Um, you want to ask, you can take any story, you want to ask story, what's the story, um, how did a certain event happen? Um, why did the events happen in the story? And just dive a little deeper, regardless of the story that you're um, placed with. Um, I've been here almost two weeks and um, my scripture that I wanted to point out, um, which was very moving to me because we've been to many churches and there was a lady um, that is in leadership in the church, which when we go to the churches, they point out who's in leadership and what they're doing in the church. And there was a lady, and forgive me for not remembering her name, but I was very touched by her. 
Um, she said that um, she, she's honored to be able to come to church because her husband is not a believer. And, um, but she, her husband allows her to come to church anyway, which was very inspiring. So the verse that a uh, few verses stood out to me, but then there was two verses where she was keeping God's command. And the first verse came from Corinthians 1, um, chapter 7, verse uh, 24, where it says, brothers and sisters, each person as responsible to God should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. And then she is in the situation in her mind, but not knowing what to do, but she stuck it out and stayed with her husband, even though he's not a believer. Um, and then 13 of uh, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 13, it says, and if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. And with that, she's being obedient and staying with him and also trusting in the second, the next verse that follows, which is for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife and vice versa. The unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. So that right there was just very moving to me because I am a mother of three. I believe my husband is a believer, but then again, sometimes it's questionable because he does not go to church as often as I do. But just seeing her strength and persevering and wanting to be there and um, do this program to help children. Um, I'm, just, I'm encouraged by her and her strength of still going and knowing that God will open up the door to make her husband and her unity one day in the church together with her that she is um, embracing. Okay, let me pause from literacy just for a second and, and go to the second thing that I wanted to teach you um, as far as what their experience is. Volunteerism. When we bring volunteers across borders and Christians who go serve other Christians, this is what we get. And her testimony right there showed me how she brought strength to an, a situation I never would have predicted in, in crossing over in that. I want you to imagine for a second, um, there, if, if the missionary world, missionary world has certain statistics that are out there. Still to this day, the North America sends about 300,000 missionaries a year. The second largest country is, is um, South Korea, which was, is about 80 to 95,000, somewhere fluctuating in there. Somewhere close behind that now is emerging in Nigeria. And so they are growing in Africa in the sense of mission mentality. As that grows, I love to see a part of it. And that's what I want to cultivate. This is not the old mission model of the West bringing everything to the rest. No, the West is learning from the rest at this point in time. And that's, that's a beautiful picture right now because the African church is rising and that sense of volunteerism to say, I will go across those borders and do something like literacy or another program is really what's happening. And that's the heart of Shanika's testimony. But now let me go back to literacy. You've heard four pieces and let me put them together. We go into a school or we go into a church and we say, we want to give you a godly literacy program to reach out so your members can be fluent and they can know God as they become literate. But we also want you to use this as an outreach tool. This is happening in several countries in Africa right now. It's happening in Nigeria in prisons. It's happening in Nigeria as an evangelistic outreach. It's happening in Tanzania um, through the church networks. And we're going after all the schools in Tanzania, okay? Just to be clear, all the schools and all the churches we can gather. And we have the strategy to do so. Okay? And part of it is these volunteer teams. When they go in, the first thing they do is say, who are the learners? Who are the leaders? And it depends what we see. If we see the leaders, we teach them so they can teach the learners. If we see the learners, we teach them and have other leaders watch us as we do it. Regardless of what we do, we do these same four things. Number one, here's how to assess learners. And, and there's a simple way to do it. And we show them. Number two, here's what you do when nobody, when certain students cannot read anything. 
in number three, here's a literacy kit of materials that take people into an accelerated path of reading. And by one year, we want them reading a Bible and doing devotionals and Bible studies. And actually, we can show that on our Daily Bread University. Take a course. If you can thrive academically, you can do anything in academics with literacy. And that's our one-year trap. And then the fourth thing is we watch them and we monitor them. I want to tell you about a school in Dar Salaam. I went there last December and we taught the teachers this program. And in January, they initiated it. By March, we asked them, how are they doing? And they kept a list of the students. That's their tracking. They asked questions to make sure they could comprehend how to read. They could evaluate what they were reading. They could synthesize and put things together. And so they asked questions to make sure it was proven. And then they put it on video. And what we saw is people who could not read sentences in January were reading full books by March. And this is the testimony we want. This is what we're gathering in large numbers across the country. And so it becomes a research testimony to say the church has the best literacy program. But don't take my word for it. Don't take our word for it as a volunteer team. We're here in a school, and so I'm going to have some school testimonies very quickly. First one is, is from John Warioba. He is a um, uh, manager of the school. This was a dream that we talked about almost two years ago now, saying I want to open a school for girls um, who are not able to always get into school, and they have done that. Well, in between that, we kept in communication, and we initiated the first pilot program together here in this country. Now we're coming back and spreading it out to several, country, uh, several sites within the country. Um, so God really built a relationship between him and I to actually start and prompt this program. And now we're seeing the fruit of that in his country, in his region, and around Africa, and it will be around the world. It is an X18 type of thing that is happening right now. So I'd like you to hear from him and just his impressions and what it means to his school and anything else he cares to share. Huh? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, my name is John Savoyoba. I'm a manager for Tumaini GPA Girls Secondary School, uh, the girls school found in Ukerewe, Ireland, one of the biggest islands in East Africa, but the fifth in the world. And I'm so thankful to God for this program, literacy program, as Dan's mentioned. And um, uh, this program is so is, uh, is good for our school, because since uh, for these two days when the team was here, the volunteering team, we oriented our teachers on this program. And of course, I came to learn a lot of things from this program. First of all, the how you can assess uh, the reading level of the uh, student. Um, it was very hard for us just to know which level of the student is he or she. But through this program, we have learned the easiest way just to help the student know which level is she. And also even the, the program of SAN, uh, how for those who are struggling with the reading and everything, even how to assess the progress, to track the progress. As I mentioned, this school is from the remote area in the Ireland, and we have received the, the we opened the school this year, January uh, 16th, and we received a student from a nearby community. Uh, and some of them are really uh, struggling with uh, uh, with the reading, because when we brought them here, but they're still struggling. And as a school, we were uh, trying to find the best way how to help them. My police, my teachers, they were uh, uh, trying to sit with them uh, every day in the evening, because this is a boarding school, just try to help them. But it was hard, because we didn't know where to start. But from this literacy program, it is easy for us, because first of all, you assess them and you know. And what I like most from this program is because it is a holistic program. It touched both the spiritual part, but also the physical part, because we learn the students are learning how to, of course, there is a, uh, the spiritual books, like a Bible, just simplified one, and through that, student can learn. And for us, that's the credit, because we want our student to love God, to be rooted in the word of God, so this program build that and uh, uh, build that uh, part, but also reading skills. Uh, uh, in our country, you know, reading is not like a catch up for, me, for most of us. Most people, they don't like reading, but this program, we love it because uh, it exposes a student uh, for reading. There's a lot of books which they can choose by themselves and read. 
So I'm really excited for this program. And I just want to thank Dan and other people around the globe who are supporting this initiative. And I um, strongly believe that through this program, like a two years or three years to come, this school will be one of the best schools in the country to build the culture for our students to know how to read and understand. Uh, for, for instance, today when we were uh, uh, passing our students through this program, we also come to realize uh, I'm a manager, but sometimes I'm not interacting with the student most of the time in classes. I'm doing a lot of administrative issues. But I came to realize today that there are some students who can, they can read, but they don't understand what they are reading. But through this program, we have learned the best way to help them. So I'm really thankful for God, even for the resources that we have. Of course, sometimes you can have a resources in the library, but again, if you don't know how to use it, how to help the student with the books, that's like useless. But this program has helped us. And of course, uh, we know now how to support our students. So thank you very much, everybody who is in this program, who's facilitating this program. And we believe that as a school, we, we internalize this program. Uh, today, while we were uh, wrapping, wrapping this, uh, the, the orientation course with our teachers, we agree that we will start implementing this program to our students, to the school, so that our students can improve their communication skill, but also grow uh, academically. So thank you very much, and may God bless you so much. Uh, thank you, John, so much. Um, John has really been moved by God, uh, really opened up the doors for this, but let me tell you where it's gone very quickly within one year. The Ministry of Education in Uganda is in of education in Liberia is scheduled uh, to meet in August together. So we are reaching all countries uh, for this. And I just want you to imagine some of these countries are 50, 60, 80 percent Muslim. And to be able to say to the Ministry of Education, take this program. And this program is going to talk about Jesus and it's going to point them towards scriptural devotions. Um, the, those doors are not explainable for things, but I want to have um, the headmistress also say a couple of words of greeting. Praise in Jesus Christ. My name is Grace, as uh, Mr. Dan explained, I'm the headmistress of my name. GPS secondary school. So my GPS secondary school is a, a school which is admitting all girls. We have about 26 girls who are studying here. And uh, this is a boarding school. Uh, admit a student from this island uh, coming from vulnerable families. So uh, another thing I want to thanks to God because she is a shine to Mr. Dan and uh, uh, is a fellow to come in our school. They help us by explaining this program of helping students to study how they can read quickly because we have some girls who can, some can able to read, but they don't understand what they, the meaning of the, those words. Also others fail to, to read and to understand. So due to this uh, uh, program we learned today and uh, yesterday, I learned I, I can group students in different levels. Even me, I understand which level I have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, understanding my name, understanding. Also, by using this uh, sign um, symbols, it is very simple to use symbols to understand things quickly than even words. So, by using this, I can understand the way even other who do not know to read, they can use these symbols or sign to understand things. So, uh, I think that we will use it to help those struggling learners who are doing, uh, doing better, they are struggling to understand things. 
to give them knowledge as well, explain knowledge, context, synthesis, uh, analysis, evaluation, and that. We will use this uh, to help girls. And uh, as we say that it to, uh, is our aim is to bring all to all girls who are staying in this school and the other girls in the world. Also to give opportunity to all girls uh, from different abuse so that girls can get chance to read, to study, so to get knowledge so that they can be able to manage their life, to, to get any, 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 any challenge, they get to face any challenge so that they live well in this world. So that, so thank you very much, Mr. Dan. Other members uh, uh, who are here and uh, my fellow teachers, we 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 hope that we will continue to 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 use this program to help these girls, not only this, even others outside of this school. Thank you very much. God bless you. You are warmly welcome. Let me say there is one word say that what what whatever you do to at least of the uh, of brother you do and me. So Amen. thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, thank you um, very much. This is such a welcoming place, welcoming school, but I, I wanted to point out one thing is the headmistress um, in her own humility said, even my level, I know my level. Okay, this program If, if they have hit eight years old, literacy starts to settle in the brain a lot stronger. So there's still remedial things you can do before eight years old that still do things. And we're developing a little bit of a twisted, separate path of curriculum for those who are younger than eight years old, similar process and methodology. But adults can learn just like the children can learn from this program and materials. I wanted to do one last guest for a very brief time. And actually, I wanted, if it's okay, just to ask you a few questions, if that would be okay. Okay, could you introduce yourself and say your role here? Oh, my name is Frank Amos. I'm a teacher at this school, to my Gary Secondary School. I'm so interested with the program that has been brought here by our friends, Dan and the team. Uh, since yesterday, we have been trained how to help the, the student actually to read. And uh, of course, we have been trained uh, the more, more and important ways, including how to identify the level of learning, for instance, uh, for we as teachers, uh, now uh, we came to realize that, oh, we have students who are in level one, level two, level three, and level four, uh, depending on how it's capable of reading the books. So the problem is very useful. And uh, I think this can help us not only in growing this program, that uh, the, the reference program, but also in, in academic issues, because uh, at the school, we have the, the curriculum of which we are uh, implementing as per government. Uh, but through this, uh, uh, the training that we, we have been trained, we can, uh, will help us to, 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 to put more effort and also to add uh, some, maybe just to, to, to uh, maybe just to, to help the, the students to learn. Uh, one thing that we have not that uh, uh, previous, uh, we, we we used to say that maybe this uh, student uh, who, who whom maybe they do better in the the whom do better in the, the academic issues maybe they are capable of reading but when we give them the books for persons who have here grade uh, ready is a sentence medium uh, uh, devotion books but when you give them those books is where now we can identify oh this is is able to read quickly and understands all the words and so, someone is able to read but cannot understand some uh, some of the words but others also cannot uh, cannot can, cannot read uh, or pronounce some words in, in, in a good way but uh, what is more interesting is the books that they have the books here in in that uh, uh, simple sentence 
where we have our picture and some words. So uh, uh, those books is designed to help the kids actually to understand living. To be, uh, for instance, we had a, a picture showing uh, an, a bed and how the bed is doing. The, uh, the bed is fine, so it is uh, it is easy to for the for the for the student to understand and also to keep mem uh, to memorize or to keep with it uh, for longer use. Actually, the program is very useful, and as we we implement, we think that it will help us and will open up a way for us, and we shall witness so many miracles that will be done by Jesus through this program. We can press you, and if you have a question, I have one question for you. Um, you yesterday you were giving a few hours of instruction only, and today you implemented the program. How did you do? Did you feel good and confident? Of course. Uh, today, uh, yesterday when we were taught, uh, we as teachers sometimes we feel, ah, this is difficult issues. Maybe this is new things. But today, when implementing that. Uh, 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 the class we had the class with the students uh, I, I was so comfortable of course uh, engaging the kids reading and trying to share uh, when when they face difficult we can just uh, maybe change the level if, uh, we had the books of different levels so when you maybe uh, maybe when the she has taken the the book that is uh, that my uh, that that much higher than the level she can read then uh, we decided to, to to change and help them to it. Of course, the, the, I was enjoying and I was confident to teach, and I'm I, I, I'm more so confident now. Mm -hmm. I can teach, and I think through uh, through practice, then we shall make, we shall do wonders in, right. in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you to hear is that he had three hours the teaching time for a program like this for us to hand the program over when we go to a church or a school it takes about three to four hours of instruction and then when we are able we watch them perform the program with with actual live learners and students and so that is our goal also something to know is this this program is online as a website i'm going to try to post into the question and answer uh, chat and it can be put on a thumb drive um, online, there are instructional videos. This was not a webinar designed for you to comprehend every detail of the program. It was to give you exposure to it, to say it exists, it's out there, it's a system, it's got four steps, it's teachable, it's transferable in a number of hours, and volunteers can do it and implement it, and then the teachers can do it and implement it. It's godly, and it points people towards scripture. That's the main thing we wanted you to know. Online has every instructional video for every piece of instruction that we give. It has all the materials for free and they're accessible. When we come, we give thumb drives so they can print the materials free. We also are working on a kit that is about the price of a Bible. I know the prices of Bibles. I used to work in Bible translation and I know uh, that they are very costly in many countries. What if we could replace a Bible with another Bible that's copyright free, still good, um, still tested, still approved, still used over history, and it then has 22 books for literacy in it for the same price. Um, we're working on that for individuals who say, I just want my own. I want my own kit. When we go to a church, we try to give as way as much as we can. It's limited because of our luggage right now. We're working on localizing printing, and we're working on volunteers to build up extra materials beyond the literacy kit as well. What I hope you saw is the hearts of volunteers and the hearts of a goal. The goal is that everybody has scripture for themselves so that they can teach, preach, and disciple. Volunteers are the right heart for the church and for the church to grow. And you saw a display of that today to the point of, I will not just go, I will go, I will stay. I will change my life um, for doing God's work. And I'm going to be touched by other Christians in other places as we do God's work. So thank you for listening to this. I know it was a whirlwind of presentation and everything comes very quickly. To learn more is to slow it down and say, I want, I want one. You just have to contact us at, a, at Our Daily Bread, um, whether it's my email, I'll also put that, whether it's somebody else in contact with Our Daily Bread in Africa, and it will lead back to me. When you say the African Literacy Program, this was born in Africa for Africa. It will go to the rest of the world at some point. Um, but I just want to thank you, those of you who are listening from Africa, as a blessing to us. Um, you have taught me, as well as others, 
uh, really what Christianity is from a, a totally different perspective that I believe God has his hand on right now. So thank you. And we'll take your questions and answers as they come. Thank you very much, Dan and the team. Thank you for the great job you are doing. So it's time for the question and answer now. I, I've got a couple of questions here. So let me just quickly run through them because of our time. So the first question is from an anonymous attendee and he or she is asking that when teaching the Tracy program to these two groups, the church and student, what has been the most challenging group to teach? And do you find the program exciting to the trainees? You're muted then. Okay. okay. Um, that's a great question. Uh, there's a lot of challenges. I'll tell you a positive, positive challenges when we go to a little church that's a little bit up in the mountains and it is a mud made bricks um, and sticks. And we're there and we give away the materials that we can, but other people have traveled to come. So we were in a church, we gave the materials away and everybody's so thankful. Sometimes it feels like so little. And then another pastor that was a guest in that church said to us, I'm a pastor in a different church in a different denomination. Can I have a kit as well? And we know that they cannot use a thumb drive or get it online. And, and we are so limited by getting these resources in the early start. That's a positive one. Um, and there's a lot of needs expressed in these programs. Can we have this? Can I have that? Um, the negative one is follow-up. Okay, um, churches versus schools. There's good and bad in both of those. Churches, churches are busy. Schools are busy too. So we're interrupting normal procedure of curriculum, new teaching methodology, interruptive teaching methodology. In churches, um, we're interrupting what churches do and there's so much ministry in some churches and saying add one more to it. So those both have challenges to it, but both of them have blessings to it as well. Um, but follow-up is one of the biggest, biggest things. As things get busy, Sometimes people have to circle back to implementing a new program. And when they do, they start to forget some of the things that they were taught early. And so we're building infrastructure to, to, to actually keep up with follow-up. And that's been one of the challenges is we could leave and they say, that was really great. This will really work. We see it, we witnessed it, but implementing it at that next step is harder. And so that's something that we're conscious of and we're trying to be supportive with um, extra volunteers and extra infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah, this is another question from another anonymous att attendee. And the person is asking that, what do you think of the literacy in Tanzania as you compare with the US or any other part of the world? Do you think literacy is the greatest or largest challenge which hinders people from getting into the scriptures? Um, largest challenge is, is uh, debatable, I think. I think there's many challenges. I mean, you have competing faiths, you have uh, socioeconomic status where people are struggling to, uh, for, for existence in society. Um, but Tanzania is a little bit unique, um, it, not necessarily to the region, but to other parts of the world. In the United States, let me give an example. If I walk into a room, I see words everywhere all the time. The United States is highly literate, and it's not because the students are smarter. It's not because the teachers work harder. It's not because the system is better. Um, it could be because of resources, um, but it's not necessarily even methodology. It, what it is, is it's, it's exposure to words and language. And it's very monolingual. Okay, so you have one language focus. In Tanzania, for example, and many African countries are like this. You have a bilingual system with a minority language system. And I don't actually like that term because for them, it's, it's their first language. So you want run into people and their first language is not Swahili, it's not English. And so they're starting with a different base of literacy that may or may not even have a written language. So you have all kinds of learning processes going on in here. They are not weaker learners. They're actually stronger learners in many cases. But when you get to the education system, a lot of times something is sacrificed. And so, so when you put teachers in place and they favor a language, which language are they going to favor in the classroom? 
the one that they know best. So they, they may be instructed to use English or Swahili, but then they have the challenge of actually being the most fluent in one of the other languages. So it's a complex, complex challenge um, that I don't take lightly. And I don't pretend like I have a full awareness. I have studied the background of language, linguistics, things like that, um, but that doesn't mean I live in it. And so I listen. So when that question comes to me, do you think that's the biggest challenge? I say, well, I know it's one of the challenges, but let's keep listening for more of the challenges because the Tanzanians know best and the Nigerians know best and the Kenyans know best and every other country following. And so it's a complex thing that we have to partner on and continue to figure out. So great questions. Okay. Yeah, I've got another question here. And the question is, who do you think is the easier person to learn from this literacy method? The youth, the older people, or the children? Hmm. Oh, wow. Good, good research question. Um, now, there's something in the brain called a language acquisition device. I won't get too technical. Okay, but there's two theories out there. The first theory is that language settles between the ages of seven and nine years old, meaning this. Before you're seven years old, your brain is open to language. So the youngest people learn language quickly. And that's actually proven in, in research. Um, as you get a little bit older, eight, uh, eight to 11 years old, it starts to slow down and things start to settle. Meaning language in your brain settles in neurons somewhere inside your brain and it's held there. When it solidifies, it's harder to open them back up. You have to actually work harder for this. And I, I knew that theory going in. And so we said, we need to reach adult learners just as much. So we designed this program with that theory in mind of saying, if language paths are closed, what can we do to guarantee success? And, and the base of vocabulary is what we went after and saying, if we can begin with vocabulary and we can begin with retention, we have something powerful. And that's what we set out to do, is to break down the walls of that question. Um, so th there's there's like good teachers in the room from their questions right now. Um, and so if we can break down that barrier of going beyond age 11, it is harder. Um, does it get harder with 50, 60? Well, it, it really depends on how much your brain is actively learning versus repeating. Again, not intelligence, but when you do repetitious work day after day after day after day after day, and then something new comes in, you actually have to stimulate your brain to catch up to that. So when you try to learn language, you have to set aside your time to actually be fresh to go do that. So there are some tricks to do that. It does get harder as you get older, but it's not impossible. Everybody can learn. Okay, thanks. Um, another question here. Yeah. And the question is, how and when were these symbols originated as literacy materials to use? Do you think this method is easier for those who cannot read? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, I love these questions. So the, the, these mater um, those materials were uh, originated in 2016. Okay. They were originally for people who could not hear and they never learned sign language. The question was, could they access the Bible? The answer was no. And then we thought, well, um, how, could, how, how long does it take to learn a sign language? It takes months to years for a deaf person, whereas we take years to learn a language. They take months. We thought, well, how do we do that? Because there's so many sign languages in the world. There's over 425 sign languages. We thought this takes too long. So we said, what if we could take a Bible and we could take each thought in a chapter and put a symbol to it. Well, we did that and we tested it and we tested it with people who were retired people, older people. And we had them look at these symbols and we had them read those symbols. We taught them to them and then they had to read them. Then they had to translate them back into English at the time. And I compared their translation to the original chapter. And we found that they were learning and reading in a week very people. And then we decided if it can work for literacy, we did that in 2019 and 2020. And we did field tests with it. And we did it in Africa and North America. And we found that it worked for the two things. Can we teach vocabulary quickly? And can it be retained for at least two weeks? 
we found it could be retained for six weeks. And so that research is also on the website and can be looked at. So I do think it is a valuable method. When you compare it to the timeline, I was doing teacher training for years. I was teaching English as a second language for years. And the timeline is five to seven years to learn an academic language. And so I do believe this is faster than research out there right now. And to God's glory, it's his testimony. Hey, um, let me just take maybe two more. We still have a lot of questions, but because of time, we might not be able to take everything, but we'll find a way to provide answers to these questions and reach out back to you. Um, let me take these questions now. Uh, say, when Shanika mentions about the five steps of learning, does application go with the evaluation part? Uh, say that last part again. Does application application go with the evaluation part? Hmm. Yes, um, application is in the top three. Okay, and so it goes: uh, knowledge, um, content, comprehension, application, synthesis, evaluation. The bottom half is the base level. The top half is the higher level. Okay, and so that's really what we use to test students and break them out of their. A lot of students can take the knowledge level. Who is in a story? They find the name, they answer. Okay, um, what happened in the story? They can find little bits and pieces, make up some sentences. It's a little harder. Uh, why do you think that happened? It's a little bit harder. And then if you go in and say application, uh, how does this relate to? Okay, and then synthesis, how does this compare to evaluation? How has this changed? Um, you have something that students cannot avoid the proof of, of their gain. And that's what we want. So applications, the top, the top half, yes. Okay. Emmanuel Akwanye is asking that how can he access the video tutorial and the materials for this fast breakthrough to literacy program? Yeah. Um, so uh, we need to put the, we'll put the, um, and I should ask you, I mean, we can put the website with it as in a, um, when it's posted as well. Okay, and so there is a website that goes with it. Um, and the program is called Yours, uh, Year Long ODB Unique Reading System. I also will give my email openly. It's dan, D A N dot Kramer, K R A M E R, at odb.org. Okay, Dan, D-A-N dot Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R at O-D-B dot org. If you want the materials, the website, or team, okay, um, you may think I should be scared of people all over the continent or world to say, we want it, we want this. Um, please know, um, that grows my volunteers, and those volunteers are the people who serve, and that grows the kingdom. So please reach out to me freely and say, I want this. Um, I won't promise anything that I can't do, um, but I will look for what I can do. And I will provide that openly, willingly, and, and uh, I would love to partner with people interested in this. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've come to the end of the question and answer. We, won't, we apologize, we won't be able to take any more questions now, but the um, answer to questions, I'm going to compile them and um, for them to lay in our news data in the coming months, we'll include that as part of it. So thank you so much. And the recording of this uh, webinar will be up on our website and our YouTube channel this time tomorrow. And you can also find the link to the yours program that I mentioned now. I'm going to attach the link to the video so you can access it through the video link. So I'll be handing over to the VP operations for the vote of thanks and closing prayer. Thank you, Bro Yemi, for this coordination. Dan, that, that was great. Uh, and thank you for the team and the good work that is being done in, uh, in our near neighboring country. And uh, we truly want to believe God that, like you say, this thing will grow and grow and even outgrow <laughs> our capacity to manage it in the sense that we want to push it out there so that people can benefit from it. And the bottom line is that they will be 
they will have access, you know, to the transforming wisdom of the Bible, of God's word. That, that, that's the bottom line. So again, Tim, thank you very much. Uh, when Dan was saying that you are in Africa, I wondered, did you pass through West Africa? Did you pass through Senegal or Nigeria? Tanzania seems not to be Africa. Oh, no, that's just on a lighter mode. Yeah? <laughs> so just to say thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the great job that is doing there. We want to thank God for our partners, all of you that have came uh, 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 to join with us on this webinar. Uh, we don't take it for granted that you could spare some time and be with us in a monthly basis to engage about a uh, uh, cutting edge issue that triggers reflection and push us, you know, to, to think out of our box, to go out of our normal ways of doing things. And what Dan is proposing is completely revolutionary, that I can read and understand my Bible without using a conventional method or ways of doing things. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Sister Maureen, uh, for, for coordinating us today. Uh, let us pray together. Let us pray. Father, we want to appreciate you. Thank you for that and the team of volunteers, Lord, from the United States of Af America to come and to experiment what you are really doing on this side of the world. Thank you for our brethren that have opened their schools, opened their churches, notably the AIC, the, uh, 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 the Africa Inland Church in Tanzania. Father, we want to say thank you even for each and every one of us, for even giving stability of the internet. Lord, we don't want to take it for granted. At times, it's, it's just a luxury to have it that way. And thank you for the stability also of power. We give you all the glory, even as we bring this meeting to a close. We ask, Father God, that you alone be glorified. Take all the glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. May the Lord bless you. Amen. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.